hey, we're going to add some posts to our homepage. And I don't mean a separate blog post page. I'll show you, you know, how you could do that if you want to do it. But I'm going to add some posts like an archive to the homepage. And the idea is that it'll be at the bottom, maybe kind of below the contact form or something like that. Where if you want to read some articles, you can do etc. etc. However, we're not going to cover the loop builder. That it will be in tomorrow's video. Why am I not doing the loop builder now? Well, quite simply, I want to get over how do you build a basic post and a single post template. And then we're going to go and have a look at the loop builder tomorrow so that we can be a bit more dynamic and funky with how we set things up. But we're keeping it really, really basic. What you have on screen are three fake posts, okay? To be honest, these posts are exact copies of one another, except for the featured image. Let me show you. I've assigned them to some fake categories like screens and posts. If you're not familiar with categories and stuff like that, we have got other videos, but my recommendation is you go to post in WordPress, you go to categories, and you can go in and add in your category over here. So let's just add one in. We'll call it Imran. Hit return, and it is now added there. You can also have parent-child relationships. Back to the posts. We have three posts. These posts are done in the basic WordPress classic editor, okay? If I go and edit, there is nothing fancy about them. We just have a title, some fake text, we have an image, and we have some more text below as well. When you're building a post, this is how you should be doing it. Don't start going into bricks or anything else to do your post, right? Just keep it really simple, okay? Add your content here. And for anyone that's a little bit unsure, you can click this plus sign. You can do more. You can have videos, you know, accordions, things like that. You can do a whole lot more than just doing the basic image and text. Anyway, the only other thing I have done here, obviously we've got a title and content, is down here. Make sure you have assigned it to a category. So this one is going to screens. I mean, what kind of category name is that? But hey, let it go. And then down here, I've also set a featured image. You don't have to do this, but I would strongly recommend you do set a featured image. Um, and then in it, I've done an excerpt as well. And that is it. Literally, that is it. And post two and three are exact copies of this. The only difference is the title and the image and the featured image. And that's all I've done. Now, if we go over to our homepage, we are going to add in a post widget here, which will be available here. But what if you don't want to do that? What if you want to set up a separate blog post uh, archive page, for instance? When you're in Bricks and you're in Template, click Add New, uh, give it a title, and in your template type, go and click Archive. And then what you'll do is then is, I mean, obviously hit Publish and then hit Edit with Bricks. You're then going to do basically the same steps that I'm kind of going to do now. The only difference is that as soon as you go into the archive template, you will have access to all of these fields over here. The slight difference though is, and I will come back to why I've even bothered showing you this if we're not using it in a moment. If we go over here and I go and add in another section now, and to be, to be quite simple, the simplest way for me to do it is just kind of duplicate what I've already got. So I'm going to duplicate my team section, move it down like that. I'm going to rename it call it blog section. I'm going to change the header to be, and I'm going to make the background of the section have a dark color. I'm now going to drop in the post widget and there it is. And I'm just going to pop that into the container. Now here's something you might want to get used to now. When you click on post, you instantly go into the settings for it, you know, the content, the layout and all of these things. The difference is though, when you were using the blog template, if you were going to build it in there, you would easily see the archive uh, set of widgets in a way, post title, excerpt, meta description, stuff like that. If you go over here, you don't get that here. Like Even if you go to fields, that's more to do with the fields you're bringing through. You don't have that layout. And if you go here and start to go, oh, well, I'll just find the archive. Well, that isn't how it works. Okay. However, don't be fooled by that. What you see here in the template for the archive, you know, all of these items, taxonomy, comments, post, social, related, author, look at all of these items, right? You go over here and you go to single, they are there. It's just a different name, okay? They've called it single here, but in the template, if you're in the template and you've got archive, it puts it under archive. So don't feel lost, okay? You haven't lost anything. But we're not even really going to be using these features either. Um, in tomorrow's video with the Loop Builder, we will go a step further. Here, we're keeping it pretty, pretty simple. So let's start messing around with how this looks. Now, before I do anything with the layout and the fields and all of that, I think we're just going to add a bit of style, okay? So we're going to go to style, go to typography, and we're going to give this all a white font like that. Again, remember, you might want to put in a CSS style if you are going to have maybe more than one blog. You might want to have here. 
you might have another one on another page somewhere else. So have a think about, are you going to apply, apply a style to that or not? Now let's go over to the content. Let's go to layout. Uh, I'm going to say, make this be a three, but at the moment, this is set to grid. What if we go to list? Well, you will now have the list layout like that. I'm not a fan of this one, to be honest, unless you're trying to showcase videos and stuff like that. We also have the masonry effect, which is a little bit pointless because the images are all kind of not that dissimilar anyway. But if you've got different sized featured images, all of mine were landscape. If you had landscape and portrait, this could work for you. I'm, I'm not, masonry works with a magazine layout website. And then we have the Metro as well, which kind of does this, which I think is a little bit all over the place. I'm not a fan of the Metro style. I'm going to leave it as the grid for now. Okay, so we've got columns of three. Now spacing, um, we've got 30 pixels in between. You could obviously increase that if you so want. We're going to leave it at 30. We do have this nice feature though, which saves me having to create two different posts. What do I mean by that? Sometimes the very first post, you want it to stand out a bit more. So it might be like a full width. And then every other post is offset. So you might apply a style for the first post and only ever show one post. And then below it, you say, now show me everything else. But this time, don't show me the first ones are offset by one. And they might have a different style. But what Bricks does really simply and easily for you is it goes, well, okay, the first one can be full width, but then after that, everything else now is how you decide to set it up. So I think that's a really nice feature because often your latest post is the one you're really trying to push out there. In the images, we can disable the image, which ain't always a good idea. You can link the image as well. So if they click the link, is it, you know, when they click it, is it going to take them to the post? Yep, let's enable that. We can even change the image to kind of be more like a landscape approach like that if we want. By the way, you can have a slightly more squarish rectangle like that. And in fact, that probably does work better than the more slimmer rectangle. Now we move on to the fields and this is where it gets really interesting now, okay? We have the title and we have the excerpt. I'm gonna hit the plus sign over here. And I am now gonna go over to this dynamic data symbol, click that, and I have a range of fields that I could pull through. A lot of this will be determined though by what you had entered into your post when I showed you in the WordPress Classic Editor. If I go for date, it's gonna give me the date in a really rubbish format, but that's the date, okay? You could go to the author name. Let me just clear that out, by the way, otherwise you're gonna get a massive run of items. You can even add in the read more link as well, because did you notice that was not there? So you don't have to have it visible if you don't wanna have it visible. Anyway, let's stick it in, read more. Um, I'm gonna leave the, mar the, the margins for that as it is, and this is great as well. You get to apply like um, different styles. So look, if I was to go with like this, I can move the read more along if I want. That's a lot of flexibility you're getting in the standard post widget. And you got padding as well, which we don't need to worry about. What about a background color? Well, obviously let's just make that be uh, yellow. We'll make the typography of this be the dark black color. And this is where we will now apply some padding. So I think we definitely need to go with about 15 there and 15 over here as well. Now, please do bear in mind for each of these items, and I could have added as many as I want. I mean, obviously don't make it too elongated, but you can go to any one of them, scroll down and adjust the margin and padding for every individual item. You can change the background color, you can change the typography color, you can even assign separate typography values as well. Now, there is one downside to building with this widget in that I can't get the buttons to be aligned to the bottom. Um, like I would like all the buttons to be leveled. And no matter how big the excerpt is, I want the read more to all be level. Unfortunately, you can't do it here. When you do though use the loop builder or when we build our own um, uh, bespoke post archive, then we can, okay? And we will come on to that in tomorrow's video. Now let's go over some more slightly more advanced features. One of them is the filter and pagination. I'll come on to those right at the end, but we haven't even touched a query one here. This is where you now get to control basically how many posts are visible. Because what if I've got say uh, 30 posts? This will show a grid of three per row. So I'm gonna have all 30 on it. Do I really want that? Click the query little infinity icon over there. And we now get to decide, well, what are we actually showing here? Are we showing pages, posts, 
media or anything like that. So I think this is a really nice feature we've got here. I'm just going to go with posts. I'm going to say all of these by date. I mean, you can go with modified date as well, but we'll just leave them as published date, for instance. Ordering ascending or descending. I mean, look, if I was to go with ascending, it's going to flip over to the other way around. I would say descending always makes sense. How many posts are we going to show? Well, we've got three, so that's all we're going to see. But if I put one, you will see just one. Now, I am on purpose here just going to put two because I want to show you the pagination later on and it will make more sense if I've got three posts, but I'm only showing you two per page. Offsetting. Now, if I put in a one, notice we've got post three and two. The latest post is post three. OK, if I do one like that, post three, the latest one disappears. Now we have just post two and one. And you know how I mentioned earlier, what if you wanted post one to look like really, really big? You wanted a special style. You could create it and then say, just show me one post. That's it. One post, nothing more. And then underneath, you can make a copy of the post archive and you can now go offset by one and you could apply a completely different style to the post archive and have it completely bespoke and unique. So that's how you could go about doing that. Well, now we're just going to get rid of that offset so we can see three and two there. You have the option to exclude posts as well. So you could say, look, get rid of post number two. Don't show that to me. So now we have post three and one. Let's get rid of that. Or maybe make sure you do show three, which we will have as well. So you can be quite particular about particular posts. Of course, the, the better way to do that rather than picking individual posts would be to do it based on your categories. So if I go over here, the categories I had were screens and I think it was posts. If I pick screen, I should only get post three and one. And if I pick the other one, which I think was posts, I get post two. Yeah, I wasn't very creative with my fake category names, was I? And again, you can exclude certain items as well. And you can even do a query on some taxonomy as well. So this is all pretty simple. The key key thing, though, was I wanted to show you how I've picked two posts, even though this is a grid of three. Now we're going to go down to pagination. I'm now going to say show it to me. What I now have is my pagination over here. Now, based on my settings, it's gone and put it up there. I am going to move it to the bottom and I'm going to show you how to do that if it ever does do that. And I've changed the typography to be yellow as well. So now we've got three posts. I'm only showing two per page. So obviously the other post or post number one, you got to click two to go to it. So that's how you could apply some pagination, especially if you're doing like a one page website. Either way, if that ever happens where items kind of go to the left or right and they're not in place just make sure that when you're in post go over to style go over to miscellaneous and over here make sure the display is a uh, lock because if it is shown as flex what happens is all of your items kind of you have a bit more maneuverability over them but for simplicity i would just leave it as a block so there we go we have our pagination down there obviously you could change the typography you know, you know the drill, you can go in and you can modify that. And I am going to put this back to be uh, three. So the pagination disappears because I just want to show you three posts. We do have the option for filter as well. I'm going to enable the filter using the categories and our three fake categories pop up. Imran posts and screens. But do you notice there is a gap over here? Don't be fooled by this, because if you had a white screen and I had a white section or a pale one, you would see the word all over there. But because I've got a black background or a dark one, you can't see it. Don't worry, this is really easy to do. I've got my background color. If I want to modify, I'm going to leave that. I've got my typography. That is the typography for all of the items. At the moment, the all is active because... Basically, we're seeing all of them. So go to your typography active, click over here and just make sure you put the right color in. There it is. Um, so if I now just save that and we go to preview and if I click posts, it's pretty dynamic. I mean, one thing I will say, Bo, is and this is something that I don't like a lot, is there are no posts for Imran. I created a fake category and at the moment it will still show it. So I would probably say if you know you haven't got any items for it, remove it from when you set your query, exclude the terms. But look, when you click all, it shows you all the items. Um, 
So if you wanted to have a blog archive page on your actual home page, but you didn't want to have to set up a separate page, you could do something like this. But there is one downside. All we've done is create a very simple post. And by the way, I'm not going to actually have the filter on here. But let me now show you what happens if I click any of these posts. So if I click read more, for instance, or any of these items, this is what you see. And you might look at this and go, oh, well, it's not too bad. We got the images. We got who the author was. We got some social sharing icons and related posts and blah, blah, blah. This is a very limited way of looking at it. And what would be far better is if we created a single post template. And that's what we're going to do in the next video. Imran Web Squad, and like, subscribe, share and follow. I'll see you soon. Never break, always fight, never quit, do it right, play the game, win it life, have no shame, there's no time, feel the pain, let the grind, I could change, in my mind, pick a lane, commit and climb, the only way, to win it life, I never miss that fact, taking big swings, bitch, hand me the bat, put me in the ring, you'll go out in a bag.